Ahoy Rum Explorers, I'm Nia, I'm a rum enthusiast, and today we're doing a full collection of Brugal face-off. So grab a drink and come plunder some rum with me. Got your drink? It's officially rum time. So today, again, we're exploring the entire Brugal collection with the exception of Papa Andres or the Andres because obviously I cannot afford that. We're talking about a bottle that's $2,000 plus. But if you're not familiar with Brugal, they are the oldest rum distillery in Dominican Republic. This specific collection is curated by the fifth generation master roneros or the masters of rum in Brugal and we're gonna start today with the Extrañejo so on their website I'll put all the information below so you can actually look at this as well when you have a chance but basically the Extrañejo is the third bottle from the very basic to the most expensive, so they have a white an añejo, which means like uh, aged, and this is extra añejo, which means extra aged. So I'm not a big fan of white rums unless they're quite unique, and I haven't heard anything about their blanco, which means white, or their añejo, and to be honest, this was a gift, so huge shout out to our friends that give, gifted us this bottle, so I'm super excited to try this. So this one specifically, they said that it's a blend of rums, aged and ex-bourbon casks. It's meant to be a bright, clean, and um, very rich in amber's color. As far as the notes, it's going to be wood, dried fruits, almonds, cocoa, vanilla, orange peel, and caramel. So I'm going to go ahead and open this puppy up. So I am going to do the whole process. And I just want to catch up with everybody. Hope everybody's doing amazing. Thank you so much for your patience. As I said, I'm kind of taking a step back from reviews because, I don't know, honestly, I kind of fell out of love with them for a little bit, but I'm excited when they get like a true collection like this. Okay, so this is gonna be a twist off. It has a little bit of a, um, like a control here. This is, 37.4% alcohol by volume. So that's gonna be almost double, so almost like 70 proof-ish. Um, so let's start with this one. And you can see, and you can hear, look. Um, maybe I broke this, guys. See, this is what happens when you take a step back from reviews. You forget how to open bottles. Or you get so fancy, that you don't even know how to open twist cap bottles. I don't know, this is weird. Um, here, let me show you because you're not gonna believe this, but look at this. You see that? Isn't that crazy? But hey, take a look at this bottle. And I was reading a lot about the history because founder of Brugal used to travel a lot and he actually came from Spain. He got this netting as like an homage of all his expeditions and travels which is pretty cool. The other cool part about Brugal is that uh, for the first time in many years, well, in four generations, they have the first female master ronera, and that's Yacil Villanueva. Um, she's incredible. She's actually the one that came up with this one. Okay, so guess what? We, I had to go out and ask Phil for help, but we figured it out. Basically, you have to shake it um, and we were able to get some. You can definitely see what they're talking about, the very light amber colored with like a red under tinty hue. But look, if you pour it like this, you kind of have to shake it because there's a little clickety thing in there that you don't really see them here in the US, but like for example in Ecuador, we, um, we do have a lot of bottles that have that specific thing. I feel like it's kind of to control the pour especially when they want consumers to be pretty smart with their alcohol consumption since these are on the lower end type of 
bottles, but this one, I guess it's not the cheapest, but especially for what I think of when I consider developing countries, this is gonna be more on the expensive side and people just don't want people dumping rum. But anyway, let's go ahead and nose this. I'm definitely nosing what they say, the wood, the orange peel, not so much the vanilla, but definitely the almonds, the cocoa, the caramel. But it definitely seems very light on the palate. The legs are pretty normal. Sadly, they don't disclose how long they age their rums in the ex-bourbon casks. But yeah, let's go ahead and try it. Cheers. Wow, this is really good. On the palate, I'm definitely getting the vanilla, the caramel, the sweet spices. It's on the sweeter side of rum. Again, they don't disclose aging or if they add anything to this, but this is quite enjoyable. The more I read into this, I can see how the cocoa notes go through the entire collection and this is basically a very unique way of actually incorporating cocoa beans so i'm super excited to try that because it's something very unique that yasin has done for that one but let me tell you this is really really good now if i would have to guess I, it doesn't seem to me like they're they add anything but let's go ahead and do my little test Ugh, i know some people are cringing but i have to do this i'd love to know but Knowing the the history that this company has, I highly doubt that they are, you know, adding anything to it. But this is incredible. It, it's it's a very sweet, not very sweet, like fake sweet, but it tastes like a really nice aged on the sweeter side type of rum. But they really emphasize their rums being sipping rums, and I could definitely see how this is a sipping rum for sure. The other interesting thing that I saw on their website is that they recommend a lemon soda or pop or whatever you anybody calls it with a wedge of lemon for this specific rum. So if you're going to go ahead and try that, let me know. Put it on the comments down below. Um, if you have tried this, I would love to hear your perspective. Again, this is not the very basic rum, but uh, this is incredible. This is really, really good. Now, I have tried the 1888 before, but I definitely want to retry it and just compare as we get to the final bottle that I have here in my collection. So, I know this bottle, we can buy it here, but this bottle is actually brought from the DR, so I don't know if the flavors are different for export, but this is quite enjoyable. I really wish they would start pushing proofs to 40% alcohol by volume because I feel like this would be tremendous, but for $27 that I found in Total Wine that's available for sale, I, I definitely scooped this up. This is incredible. I could see this as a sipping room, or if you have like some uh, friends over that you'd give them like an old fashioned or something really nice like that, like a very, very simple cocktail, but with an elevated rum, definitely gonna spark the interest. The other thing is I did do the test with my fingers and I have no residue which leads me to believe that they don't add anything which is really really amazing. So now let's move on to the 1888. So the 1888 is a double cask aged rum. 1888 was the year that Brugal was established that's why they named this bottle 1888 in honor of their um, Don Andres their founder. Again the really cool thing is this is double cask gauge and both of the casks are one is ex bourbon and one is says ex sherry which is really interesting because if you heard about me talking the founder was originally from spain and he moved to dominican republic so i'm assuming that's where they get the inspiration to use the ex sherry cask or ex jerez in spanish and i do have to confess i have tried this before but until today, my very favorite Brugal was the Brugal Leyenda, which is legend in Spanish. So we're going to go ahead and open this up and try it again. Just for comparison's sake, I am going to take a quick swig of water to cleanse my palate. Now this specific bottle has the same beautiful netting. As I said, it's an homage to the expedition of the founder. It has a couple of metals here. It has a beautiful wax dipping and um a little tag here if you can see that 
The other interesting thing is I don't see Yasil mentioned here, so I'm assuming where it says Master Ronero. Um, Master Ronero, it says Don Fernando Brugan. So I don't remember how old I bought this bottle, but um, I definitely expected Yasil or the other Master Ronero's name there, which his name is um, Miguel Ripo. So we're gonna go ahead and open this one. Oh wow, this was way easier than the other one because as you can see, even though it's a dip wax, it does have a little tie that helps and guides you. I'm going to go ahead and pull that off. Okay, now let's wait for the amazing pop here. Oh, that was a big one. There's a classic cork. Again, I have tried this before and as far as the palette, they say that it should be vanilla, red fruit, intertwined with cocoa and natural oak spiced so as you can see from this room it is a little bit on the darker side like a deeper more reddish amber let's see the legs they're moving a little bit on the faster side again this has no disclosure as far as how long it's aged in the ex bourbon and ex sherry wow on the nose they say it should be red and dried fruits raisins dates um, spicy woodiness with hints of cinnamon this one definitely smells more like a spice drum but I'm assuming they don't add anything but it is quite deeper in color the legs are definitely a lot lankier than the other ones there was barely any legs on the other one which is really interesting so let's go ahead and try it cheers yeah this is definitely more on like a spice drum ish it's giving me more of like those woody oak notes spices I wouldn't say so much cinnamon but definitely raisins dates like dried fruits on the no on the palate on the nose oh man it's really really incredible the nose you get some of those oakiness too but it's mainly like I would say like it says red fruits and toffee definitely see that pulling through right away wow this is a nice reminder revisiting this as you can see, I've been doing pirate pours. I'm so excited. And let's see, thus far, um, again, I, I'm, I'm kind of bummed that I don't have any more of the Leyenda Brugal because I'd love to throw this in the mix for comparison's sake. But honestly, I kind of like Extra Viejo because it's more, it, it feels to me more like a typical Ron, like R-O-N, like um, Latino or Hispanic rum. This one it's giving me more of like modern double cask aging situations. So if you're looking for, if you haven't ventured into Spanish style rums, I would definitely say don't do this, do this. Um, I definitely consider this one an entry level rum. It's very accessible on the pricing. Like I said, I saw it online at Total Wine. It was $26.99 plus taxes and shipping if you were to ship it on your own. The other one is going to be $40 plus taxes. And um, it, it is a, the nose is quite unique, but the palette, it reminds me a lot of the X Sherry Cask um, age rums that I've tried out there. This one seems a little bit more unique, even though it is a Latino style rum, but I really enjoyed that, especially for the price point. So last but not least, we're moving to the Brugal Visionaria, but let me go ahead and stand up so I can show you this amazing bottle. So as you can see, it comes in a very cool box. It has the same netting, but it's a little bit different because it has blue netting. And then on the sides, it says that this is edition number one. It does say, um, has a little QR code to discover aroma, aromatic cast toasting. It has Yasil's signature, which I was hoping on the other bottle. And then here, it has it in Spanish and English, which is really cool. So let's go ahead and open this up. As you can see, this is the front and this is the back.
so while I open this, let me tell you what makes this rum so unique. So typically, like you've heard before, they age in ex-bourbon casks, and in the case of the 1888, they age in ex-bourbon and then ex-sherry. This one specifically, they do a very unique thing, which is they toast the cask with cocoa beans and then they put the rum to age there. Now, as you can see, as I mentioned, the cocoa flavorings and notes really pull through through all their rums. See, it's like a little um, container for inside the box. So it reminds you seal of her family's farm that has a lot of cocoa sections as well. So she, it reminds her of walking through those cocoa fields and smelling the cocoa beans and tasting the cocoa beans and I can totally relate to that because when my grandfather had a farm on my mom's side of the family um, they had cocoa beans everywhere and he would immediately go ahead and open those cocoa beans and you would eat it and you'd be surprised how shocking the taste was once again this is a wax seal but they do give you a little tab that you pull off which is really nice Ooh, I'm excited for this one. Gonna cleanse my palate. Oh, and by the way, the little pods that hold the coffee beans inside, they're kind of like a, um, if you're from any Latino country, you have kind of like guanabana or, um, it's like this fruit that's white, but it's not super sweet, but not tasteless. It's kind of on the sweeter side and it's white and it's kind of like fluffy is what I would call it. But anyway, it's really good. So that's on the outside and then they grab the cocoa beans from the side and that's how they make chocolate. So let's go ahead and hear this pop. Ooh, that was a big one too. By the way, real cork as well. Oh man, I'm so excited. The bottle also is kind of frosted by the way. Here, let me get closer so I can show you. Um, you see the frosting here, like on the top it dissipates, but here, kind of frosted here you can see a close-up here it is very very cool so on the front it does say notes of dark chocolate toasted nuts and orange peel finished in toasted virgin European oak casks this one does have a batch and a bottle number sorry I mean a batch number it's DR 004 B as in Bravo. Let's go ahead and put pour some of this. Wow, this really has like a dark chocolatey note. So let's see. On the palette, they're saying it should be vanilla, caramel, dark chocolate, dried fruits, and toasted nuts. On the nose, I'm getting a little bit of fusel oil. Definitely the cocoa beans, but it smells like another rum I've tried but let's see the palette. Cheers. Wow, definitely getting a little bit more heat than the rest. This one is, okay, see, this is where I'm talking about rums need to be. This is 45 ABV, so 90 proof. This is incredible. The nose is, it smells familiar, but the palette is very unique. I'm getting very dark chocolate notes. Let me take another swig. As far as the legs, I'd say they're pretty much, oh yeah, I'm getting some beating here on the top. Very, very lanky compared to these other two, which I did expect that. Let me take another sip. Man, and at the finish, I do get some peppery spiciness, but just like, I guess from them being virgin oak casks that they're toasting. And this one is less sweeter than any of the other rums which is really good if you don't like sweet rums I definitely think you'll like this one specifically but let's see is it treasure chest approved I would say as a Spanish style rum I haven't tried anything like this in a long time I am gonna treasure chest to prove it this is really really good And for the pricing, I think it's about $100, but I really like the presentation of the bottle. 
I think it's something unique to add to the collection. That's why I'm going to add it to the treasure chest. Cheers, everybody. A lot of dried fruits. And like I said, the, the peppery at the end, it's a very long lingering palette. It's quite enjoyable. So Ori wanted to come and say hi. But I definitely wanted to go ahead and go through them one more time, cleansing my palette and see if I detect anything else. Again, I really wish I could afford the next level of this, which is the Papa Andres, but that one I just saw at a total wine for 2,800 and it's way out of my budget. But let me start with the Extrañejo again. And this is really nice. For $27, that's, that's incredible. And please leave the on the comments down below if you have tried this one and you've gotten the bottle here in the US because I'm very interested in seeing how different it is from the ones from uh, Dominican Republic. Let me cleanse my palette. I'm so glad that the proof and the ABV was brought up for the Visionaria release because it makes it so phenomenal because even though you have a very strong chocolate like caramel vanilla dried fruit notes you can still feel the rum in there which i absolutely love we have to realize that at least for me and i don't know for anybody else but i love when there's heavy heavy notes in bottles of rum but they still remain true to the fact that they're that it is a rum and not a liqueur that's where i feel like the proof helps the rum stand out from the different notes. Let me know what you think. Moving on to the 1888. This one I've seen a lot in liquor stores, by the way, I did talk about how they drink this one. This one specifically, they say with just a cube of coconut water. I haven't tried that yet. Again, this bottle was just open for this video, but I have tried the 1888 before, but I definitely want to try it with the coconut water ice. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about anybody else, but as far as X Sherry or Export Cask Finished or Age Rums, my palette is kind of like, eh, they're good, but been there, done that kind of thing. If you do love X Sherry Cask, definitely scoop up the 1888. It is $40, so not super cheap, but kind of medium range rum, what I would say, but then. Let's move forward with the Visionaria one more time. Like I knew this was gonna be good because there was a lot of hype around it, but this is very unique and the rum really stands out. Yeah, it's, it's very unique and as it starts oxidizing, it gets smoother and smoother. I still feel that peppery note at the end. To me, it kind of reminds me of Privateer, how they use a lot of virgin oak. They use virgin oak and toasted cocoa beans in there. So it's kind of reminding me of that spiciness when I talk about spiciness on this one. I'm not talking about actual spices. It's kind of giving me that toasted oak note, which is incredible. But if you are here for this review, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed me doing a full collection because this is quite unique. I rarely get a full collection of bottles for reviews so super excited to bring you this review if you are not subscribed hey incredible content coming up from my australia trip and we are going to jamaica in a couple weeks so definitely check out and subscribe so you don't miss out on that content as well and i look forward to the next one cheers here say hello to the people say hi people hi people i like rum too